Hi everyone, in this video we'll go over kernel pool manipulations techniques. Basically, now we have this scenario where we can have a free chunk used and we want to figure out a way to replace it with data that we control before it is actually reused. And we know it's on the non-page pool, so we need to figure out some tricks to manipulate the non-page pool in order to get our free chunk in a certain area on the heap in order to be able to reuse it in an efficient way. So in this part, we're going to cover different things in order to have a better layout on the pool. The first thing we're going to look at is how we can manipulate the, the pool using two different techniques. The first one is spraying the heap as much as we can to get deterministic layout and deterministic heap address. And the other one, which is heap feng shui, which relies on manipulating the heap in a more efficient and precise way. Then we're going to look into the different mitigations that make it more difficult to manipulate the heap. And one of them is called delayed free. And we'll see how when we try to free a chunk, it doesn't get freed right away and how to bypass that mechanism. Then we'll look into how we can manipulate the heap by creating holes in order to get our kernismans allocated into these specific holes and what are the advantages of doing so. And also we're going to investigate how to manipulate the heap without creating holes and what are the differences. Finally, we'll look into what kind of data we want to use to replace the kernismans after we trigger the bug in order to control the fake enlistment for the next iteration of the loop. Okay, let's get started. In general, there are two common heap manipulation techniques that you'll hear about. One is heap spraying and the other one is heap feng shui. So if we focus on the first one, which is the heap spraying technique, the idea is basically you just allocate a ton of stuff on the heap and generally the end goal is to have some predictable address allocated. And generally that technique might help you bypass ASLR because from now on you know there is something you control at a specific address. And then the second technique is a more precise and interesting technique which people typically call heap feng shui, which is based off this Chinese term that you can look up and maybe it will make sense why they call it heap feng shui. So both techniques are heavily reliant on the actual software you're targeting. So like browsers typically have some JavaScript functionality that people like to use with like certain type of arrays. Or back in the days, we would basically load lots of images to get a deterministic address and bypass ASLR, and that would allow you to spray memory. And kernels have their own sort of semi-established techniques, but sometimes it's very situation specific. And so in general, for the spray technique, the baseline idea of what you want is some code path that you can call, in our case, in the kernel, or whatever you're dealing with, where you control as much data as possible and ideally you can allocate chunks over and over and over again without a limit. For the spray technique that's basically all you need. You don't care about freeing, you don't care about anything else. Finding heap feng shui candidates is a little bit harder because you generally want to be able to manipulate things with a little more granularity. So you want to be able to typically control the size of the allocation or have a few options for the size of the allocation because for something like a use after free you might be replacing something like a k enlistment structure which is of a specific size so you want to find some sort of heap manipulation code path that lets you specify a size that matches the target structure that you want to replace which in this case would match the size of the k enlistment allocation and situationally this can be really hard and there's lots of complicated tricks to get around it. And sometimes the techniques are documented here and there in public exploits or papers. So it really depends. Sometimes you need to research it yourself. Most of the time, you also ideally want a way to free the chunks 
because with something like Feng Shui, you often need to really manipulate the layout. It's not just spraying a ton of memory. Sometimes it's creating holes that you can fill with other data later and stuff like that. And you still also ideally want a way to control the contents of the chunks that you are allocating as much as possible. And so the perfect Feng Shui candidate would be a single function or a couple of functions that let you do all of that, but it's not always that simple. And so originally we didn't know which K enlistment to free. So the idea was to just free all of the K enlistments and replace like a, a ton of memory with whatever really big allocations that didn't necessarily have to match the size of the K enlistment itself. And part of the problem with something like that is if you're freeing a whole bunch of k-enlistment at once, there is this concept in heaps where if you have one in-use chunk and another in-use chunk just after or just before in memory, and then you free one and then you free the other, the heap manager or algorithm tries to be clever and combine those two free chunks into a one bigger free chunk. And so then if you reallocated that memory, the start of the new chunk that you allocate would be at a different location that you might expect. And so this type of scenario they call it coalescing, is not ideal, especially in our case where we specifically want to control something like the fling pointer of the k enlistment structure. So if we just free them all and we replace a whole bunch of memory, we don't know exactly where to put something like a fling pointer in memory necessarily when we replace the chunk. So generally when doing heap feng shui, you want something a little bit more precise and you want to avoid that coalescing happens. There is a bunch of mitigation that have been added to kernel pools over time. Fortunately, almost none of them relate to our scenario. And so you can refer to the Arch 2021 course for more details on these mitigations or look up kernel pool mitigations on Google or whatever, and you will find lots of papers. But basically all the mitigations that try to encode pointers, add cookies, or check bounds when accessing them are trying to prevent memory corruption vulnerabilities like buffer overflows. But because in our case, it is a use after free, and we said our goal is to replace the k enlistment with as much control data as possible, what will really matter is what control we have over the k enlistment fields and how this k enlistment is used afterwards. And because we are not corrupting pool metadata, like you would typically do in a buffer overflow scenario, we don't have to worry about most of them. Really the only mitigation that affects us is something called delayed freed and we'll go over it in the next video.